So Lucy has managed to find where all the grown-ups have been taken to. And suddenly they're no longer grown-ups, but acting like children. Chapter 20, Normelatron. This is a disaster! We're all doomed! Ella whined, flopping into Lucy's pillow dramatically. Norman paced around the room behind her, his feet squeaking on the creaky floorboards in rhythm. Not necessarily, he said. Oh, please, Norman, it's useless. Mamas and papas are gone. Lucy's gone. There are monsters under our beds and, yep, there are only white marshmallows left. Ella inspected the half-empty packet of sweets. This is the worst day of my life. I officially quit. Lucy wouldn't quit on us, insisted Norman. She didn't give up on the grown-ups. Ella sighed. Okay, Mr Skatey Pants with all the badges, what do we do then? Norman closed his eyes and fought as hard as he could. What would Lucy do? They both sat there in Lucy's bedroom wondering what Lucy would do if she woke up and found out that she was missing. What would Lucy Dunstan do if... Wait a sec! Ella said, interrupting the narrator. We already know what Lucy would do. We do? Uh Uh-huh. She already did it when the grown-ups first disappeared. Norman scratched his neatly combed head trying to remember. She put on her school uniform, he guessed. No, don't you remember what she said? How did my mum find out what was going on in the world? Ella said in her best Lucy's voice. Norman's eyes lit up. The news! Right, you know what? We all, we just all, we just worked all that out together. We're a team now, Norman. We've got to stick together, Ella said. Yeah, like two Transformers coming together to build an even bigger, even better one. Norman agreed excitedly, linking his fingers together to demonstrate Norman and Ella together. We are Norm Elatron! He boomed. This time it was Ella who scratched her head slowly. Too much? asked Norman nervously. Too much, Norm. Let's go and switch the TVs on, she said. Okay. The both ran downstairs. Norman switched on the TV and together they began scratching for news of Lucy. Chapter 21 Lucy in Creekerland. Mom, Lucy called out across Mom Main Street, Creekerland, but her call was completely ignored, not just by her mum, but every misbehaving grown-up around. She ran straight over to her mum and helped her to her feet. She stared at her. Her mum's usually neat brown curls were fizzled and tangled and her pyjamas were crumbled and splodged with what looked like strawberry ice cream. That was so much fun. You've got to try it. Let's go, Mrs Dunstan cried, tugging on Lucy's arm as she tried to ride the vomit-inducing waltzer again. Um, I think you've had enough of that for one day, Lucy said. Yes, mummy, said Lucy's mum, mocking Lucy for being so bossy. Don't call me that. Don't call me that, 
Mrs. Dunstone repeated. Stop it! Stop it! It's not funny! It's not funny! Why are you being so annoying? Why are you being so annoying? I'm not annoying, you are. I'm not annoying, you are. Lucy folded her arms and let out a frustrated sigh. Her mum was acting like a spoiled child. OK, I'm a big fat idiot, Lucy said. Mrs Dunstan burst into uncontrollable giggles, pointing and laughing. You're a big fat idiot, you're a big fat idiot, she sang merrily. Lucy looked with worry at the grown up grown woman in front of her, this lady who looked like her mum. What has this place done to you? she whispered. Oh, lighten up, grumpy pants. It's just a bit fun, Mrs Dunstan said, poking Lucy in the ribs. But this wasn't fun, not for Lucy, not one bit. In fact, it was far away from fun as possible. Can you imagine your mum and dad pointing at you and saying you're a big fat idiot? He might even make you want to cry, which is exactly what Lucy did. Big fat idiot tears welled up in her big fat idiot eyes and plopped out in massive drops down her cheeks. She sobbed so hard she couldn't even see. Everything was just too much. Too out of control, too overwhelmingly stressful. All these responsibilities have fallen onto Lucy's shoulders. So suddenly she didn't know where to begin. There's Lucy's mum. Saving the grown-ups, looking after Whiffington kids, confiscating confiscating dangerous items, trying to keep the place tidy. Was this what it was like being a grown-up? Maybe the wallop is changing me too, Lucy thought suddenly. If this place is making the grown-ups more childlike, then isn't it possible that it's making me more grown-up? Lucy shook her head angrily. If this is what being a grown-up feels like, then no thank you very much, she cried. Being a grown-up is rubbish. Just then, she felt a hand on her face, a kind, warm, wiping away the big fat tears. Once the tears cleared, Lucy's heart seemed to melt a little at what she saw. Her mother was staring right at her, a look of astonishment on her face. Mom. Lucy asked. My little Lucy pup, said Mrs. Dungeon, sounding like the woman Lucy knew. What happened? Lucy asked, wondering why her mum had suddenly woken from the strange wallet magic. I, I can't really explain it, Mrs. Dungeon said, scratching her head. One minute I was feeling all excited about riding these roller coasters. Then I heard something. Something that made everything else seem unimportant. What was it? You, Mrs Dunstan said. But I was calling you and trying to speak to you, Mum. Really? I don't remember that. I just remember hearing you crying. It's a saying that always made me so unhappy. Ever since you were tiny, Mrs Dunstan said pulling Lucy in for an enormous squishy cuddle. Lucy? Yes, Mum. Where on earth are we? Mrs Dunstan gazed around the mayhem surrounding them. Grown-ups were sprinting about carelessly, screaming at the top of their voices and were generally being an ungrown up like as they could be. Actually, Mum, we're not anywhere on earth. We're below it. Lucy said, and quickly tried to explain all that she learned about the wallop and the creakers who lived there. That's why I'm here, she finished. I've come to take everyone back home. If you think this place is bad, wait till you see what the kids have done in Whiffington. 
Oh no, what happened? Mrs. Dunstan asked. Lucy took a deep breath. Well, there are three sharks in Wifferton Pool, thanks to Jackson Gilly. Billy Noshing's been stuck in a crisp vending machine for two days. Ella and Norman have been knocked out by dodgy dust. And as a whole, Biffington is pretty much a hazard to the health of anyone who sets foot in it, Lucy explained. What about my son? said a worried voice from behind her. James Crackney. Lucy whirled round and came face to face with an anxious looking man in polka dot pyjamas who appeared to have lots of candy floss stuck in his hair. She couldn't believe it. Had another grown up snapped out of Creaker's spell too? And my daughter Suzanne, I think she's in your class, said a lady in a stripy nightie, stepping towards Lucy. Lucy looked around and realised that a handful of grown-ups had started listening to her. As she described the awful mess Whiffington was in, more and more faces began to turn her away as they woke up from the twisted Waleb magic. Fetch me my clothes at once, ordered Mayor Noying. We must get back up there. Fetch your own blooming clothes, snapped Mrs Noying, the mayor's wife stepping out of the crowd. Oh, oh, yes, of course, my dear, said the mayor. Lucy smiled. The Wallop's power was fading. The grown-ups were growing up. Not only that, Creakerland was fading too. As Lucy watched, all the roller coasters and wonderful, delicious smells transformed into what they really were, as if strange mist was lifting Suddenly, she was surrounded by hideous piles of junk and rubbish, pum pumping rotten smells into the thick, pungent air. A second later, the ground started to wobble. Lucy felt this wobble before, when the spider on the map moved its crooked legs. The Waleb is moving, Lucy cried, and she was right. A huge tunnel twisted open in the knoll with next to where Lucy and the grown-ups of Whiffington had gathered, and Lucy glimpsed a row of small, gleaming eyes looking at her from the darkness. What's going on? Mrs Dunstan cried. It's them, Lucy said, pointing at their eyes. Who? The things that snatched you and brought you down here. It's the Creakers. And we'll find out what happens next time.